Uh, Ink to Blow, we wrote that. Uh, we took our time. We took like about a four-year period. Well, it's five years between the two albums, but writing-wise, it's probably a good three or four years, you know, on and off, not like every day writing music for four years straight, but because we were touring during those years for the album before. We approached it the same as we always write songs, but this time we recorded everything, pretty much got it down to where, okay, this feels like a song. We record it because we have our little studio. And uh, then we were like, Okay, now let's just put this to the side for a month or whatever, you know, and just come back to it, which we did, and we knew. So we go back and we go through every song over again, and like, you know, I think we could change this little part here, like restructure some of the progressions, like the changes and maybe add a bridge or something. We did that to every song a couple times over until it felt like, okay, now this feels like a finished piece of music. Maybe we overanalyzed it too, who knows, because... <laughs> Sometimes you can write a song in like 28 minutes and it's, you're like, wow, that song's sick. It may be simple but perfect, punchy, you know, and it just flowed because it was like some classic arrangement, who knows. But um, yeah, on Ink and Blood we did that for a few months. We definitely changed arrangements a lot, but we didn't physically record it, put it aside, because we were kind of pressed for time. Like, we had a kind of a, we almost had a deadline. Like, with Relapse and us, we made an agreement what time and our agents for touring and all this stuff. We were like, you got to get it done for this time so we can put it out for this date. And that way, everything all lines up perfectly to tour and marketing. And so we were a little quicker with it. It was more of on paper, rearranging things, you know. We'd go through it and record it we would record it and listen to it back real quick and go i don't know man maybe we can or we'd play it and say uh, maybe we can change that and or we did this too many times you know we definitely rearrange the thing probably more than inked even could but we were doing it quicker you know not, not really sitting on it as much more spontaneous rearrangements we were kind of not in a contract at that point and we were kind of on our time we were we were like we're not in a hurry to do anything we're going to take our time and try to make a very sick record here and that's kind of why we took so long. We didn't really push it. We didn't want to push the envelope. So we were like, we weren't even, literally the thing was almost done when Relapse was in, got involved. And the whole crowdfunding thing is weird. We did, um, we were going to make our own label. The whole point was, we're going to kind of put this out on our own. And when it all was done, like, the, okay, we raised 60 grand is you know when you look at kickstarter 60 grand well when it all was said and done it was actually 45 because 15 of it the credit cards never went through to to collect the money from so it was a, you know just 25 percent was out the window and then this company helped us kind of arrange the whole campaign they didn't even tell us i don't know how this even worked out but they took 25 percent from from the 45 because for helping us and the funny thing was we were told that they were just going to help us as a friend of a friend who has this company for marketing anyway that happened and then after we we had to produce all the materials that people basically were purchasing you know because we were getting you know cds and t-shirts and all the stuff finals and when it was all said and done we shipped everything out it was crazy it was like we spent about 20 grand on shipping it was i think it was 19 just on shipping I think we spent about eight thousand on product. You know, when it was done, it was about seven grand left. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, anyway, Relapse came to us and offered us a killer idea because we we literally were looking at all these companies like Red Distribution and the Syndicate for doing uh, radio marketing, and we had a, a different PR people in line, like basically subcontract work out to people to help do the leg work while we bas basically micromanage everything. That was our idea. Relapse came to us and was like, hey, we'll put it out and we're going to be using the same exact companies you're talking to and you can, we'll be the machine and we'll split the profits down the middle with you. And our album was already recorded basically, so it was, it was a win-win situation. We were like, all right, we'll just, and then we put our name next to it. If you notice, there's a label, label or a logo called Gibtown Music. That's our company. That's what we were going to call the label. But So Relapse us to put it on there and it's basically half ours, you know. Speaking of Gibtown, Town, we kind of thought maybe eventually if we can get the machine rolling enough to where there is money laying around where we could help uh, pr produce other bands because we have our own studio too. We were like, 
maybe eventually we could even put out other bands. Maybe at first bands just in the local area of Tampa or Florida. That was kind of an idea too, you know. It could possibly turn into that, you know. But with the way the world is, it's almost turning to a point where you might not even need a label at some point. You just need somebody to fund it for you so you can press it and distribute it, you know. And with Facebook and all the social media, it's so easy to get your name out there. Facebook's definitely a good tool. I mean, you can obviously reach out to people and you can market your band through that. There's so many other avenues to marketing, though, you know. I mean, banner ads on all the different uh, web zines, you know, you can do that, too. And, you know, McDonald's still makes advertisements on TV for a reason, you know. And obviously, I mean, if there's a killer print magazines it's still good to get your name in those and try to advertise in that you know because if you advertise with those magazines they're for sure going to support you because you're helping fund their magazine by paying for advertising and they're going to want to at least interview you or talk about you so it's all it's all a big machine you know but facebook definitely helps big time This music is hard to, yeah, like, we try to save as much as we can because, I mean, it's just this bus alone is a joke how much it costs. But, yeah, we've got, basically, we got our merchandiser with us, Robin, and we got a front of house because, like, our band, we it's like we got to have a front of house guy doing, you know, you want you want the band to sound the best they can. That's very important, I think, more than anything, you know. Obviously, you need someone selling merch. But when we got Rich helping with the drums and the rest of us all, you know, DIY. We manage ourselves in general. I mean, we're our own management. You know, we take care of everything. Like, we all kind of, Donald, John, and I all kind of have different things we do. Like, even at home, the daily stuff we need to be done. And uh, same on tour, you know. Like, Robin, she's doing our merch. She'll go pick. She's kind of making sure we get the rider for us, too. You know, the hospitality stuff. And making sure we know set times. And she did some pre-production advancing for us. And uh, collects the fee for us. So that's cool, you know. We, we do the rest with the agent ourselves, you know. So, awesome. Yeah, I we're kind of we're kind of punk hardcore in that whole sense, big time. Other than the big old bus we got, we're old men. We're fifty. It's hard. I'm not going in a van for twenty thousand miles and drive myself. You